Video. Today's video is all about my homemade ice cream recipe. I know so many of you have asked me for this recipe and I always said I can't give it because I got it from a restaurant. Well, the reason I can now give it is because I actually made my own recipe. So I have been tweaking around with this for quite some time now been trying it out with all these different flavors and things. Uh, the last number of cream pictures on my Instagram, which is where you often ask for the recipe, have been with this new recipe and I'm so happy with the results. I will tell you a couple of tips and tricks along the way. Um, so what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna show you the recipe for my ice cream base. This is usually the beginning of any kind of flavor that I make. I usually always do the base and then go on to mix in add-ins and all of that. So this is where the magic happens. And then from there I go on to flavor. So we'll go through all of that. I wanted to start with showing you kind of my equipment and disclaimer, I do separate my own cream and I do think that that is very much a reason why I get the ice cream that I get. It is much um, higher percent cream than when you actually buy heavy whipping cream. And so I hope that you can still get good results without it. But uh, I do think that is a big secret if I'm honest about why mine turns out the way it does. But this is the cream separator that I use. I have had this for years. Um, I'm gonna try to find some kind of link for it. I have no idea if I can. I've had it probably at least five years. Um, but with living on the farm, it's so nice to be able to have that. And if you live on the farm, it might pay off for you to do that. If you have to buy your milk at the store, it could get pretty expensive to do this on your own because I, I use about three gallons of milk to get one quart of cream. That's how high percent my cream is. But this is what my cream separator looks like. I'll insert a couple of little clips of where I was separating the cream here. Uh, but the skim will just come out of this spout and then the cream comes in here. You can adjust how thick you want your cream. Mine is really thick. <laughs> so as you can tell, this is definitely thicker than what you would buy at a store in heavy whipping cream. So like I said, just take that into account when you're making this. Um, one tip is later when I make the base, you can actually add a little bit of butter and that'll help too. So the other obvious appliance that you're gonna need for this recipe is an ice cream maker. I love this one. Again, I've used it for a number of years. It's the Keys and Art. I'll link it below. I know on Amazon they were actually really on sale a couple weeks ago. I don't know if they still are. What I love about it is you just freeze the ice cream bowl. Um, a lot of ice cream makers you need salt and ice. These you do not. You just freeze your actual bowl. You do have to make sure that the bowl is frozen for about 24 hours. Otherwise your ice cream will not get thick. Um, and then I actually have two bowls and I just use the same base, but you can get just the bowls on their own. That way you can make much bigger batches. So anyways, that's all the equipment per se that we need. Um, as for ingredients for my base, they're super easy. All I'm using is a quart of heavy cream, as heavy as you can find. I have 10 eggs, about a cup, like just a little bit less than a cup of maple syrup and then a pinch of salt. I love using vanilla in all my bases as well, but I'm really picky with what vanilla I use. Um, I feel like if it's just a cheap, like regular grocery store vanilla, they just kind of taste like alcohol and maybe make it worse than if you didn't use any. But if you can get your hands on really good vanilla or even vanilla bean, um, that's amazing in any base recipe as well. So I'll show you how I make my base now and then the base does need to completely cool before you can go on with actually freezing it. Normally what I do is I will separate my cream and make my base one day and then I'll set my base in the fridge and let it cool overnight and then churn it 
the next day and put in all the add-ins and all of that. So I'm gonna separate my cream this morning and then hopefully by this afternoon, it'll be cold enough that I can actually churn it and show you the process there. But if your base is just even a little bit warm, it's not going to churn up nice in your ice cream freezer. So that is super important. So I'm gonna give that a try with this ice cream. It is super delicious, tastes so much better, I feel like, than bought ice cream, but it will melt faster than bought ice cream because I do not put antifreeze in my ice cream. Did you know that actually people do that? It's crazy. And then the other key before I get going, I'm afraid I'm gonna forget to say all this later. It's been such a game changer in my ice cream thing. So pardon the little rant here at the beginning, but another really important thing is the temperature of your freezer. So actually in my fridge freezer, I like to set it as cold as possible. Again, because I don't put antifreeze into my ice cream, um, it does freeze really hard if your freezer is set to cold. To start with, I'm just gonna go ahead and pour all of my cream into this pan. Then also the maple syrup can go in right away. And then I turn this on high and give it a good little stir. And then while this heats up, I'm gonna go ahead and separate the eggs. whites for this recipe you can save that for angel food cake or feed it to your pigs or whatever you want to do we are gonna go ahead and whisk our yolks now cream is really hot now I don't like it to be boiling quite just pretty hot and I'm gonna grab my yolks here and then we're just gonna there went the whisk Okay, so to temper the egg yolks, wow, can't talk to it. I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of this cream and mix it in with my yolks. You do have to be careful that you don't get the yolks boiling or else you'll get scrambled egg ice cream. <laughs> I may have done that a time or two. My cream was boiling a little bit. I don't like if it does, but it was boiling a little bit down here. So I'm just gonna pull it off and just actually let it sit like this for a while. What I'd like to do is <laughs> to not let my cream get quite so hot that it's just barely not boiling. Uh, and then add my egg yolks and then I just turn my burner off and let them sit there and I'll stir it to make sure that we're not getting <laughs> scrambled eggs. Well, I'm gonna just let it sit here. You can see it's already starting to thicken a little bit. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit out here and then I'm gonna pop it in, um, probably actually the freezer today since I'm trying to cool it fast. Uh, and just keep an eye that you don't actually let it freeze in there, but you just wanna cool it off completely before you churn it. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> this is also when you wanna add your pinch of salt and stir that in. Um, and also, this is when I would put in your two tablespoons of butter if you are not using super heavy cream like I am. All right, now I'm gonna decide what ice cream flavor I want. I love to just go on Pinterest and type in ice cream flavors and just scroll through and you can find so many. Ooh, that looks good. Cinnamon Crunch Dulce de Leche Ice Cream. Salted Caramel Brownie Ice Cream. Chocolate Chip Peanut Butter Ice Cream. Toasted Marshmallow S'mores. Lemon Blueberry Cheesecake. We've done something like that before. It's delicious. Pito Ice Cream. Yes, we've done that one too. For the brownies, I'm gonna follow this recipe. I found it on 
line. So it's not my recipe, so I can't show it to you, but I'm gonna link it down below, and you can go ahead and follow that if you also wanna make this flavor of ice cream. For the fudge sauce, super simple. I'll just turn this on like low to medium and adding about a cup of dark chocolate and then I'm gonna get some cream. To say about half a cup. <laughs> Don't you love when people are like approximately this and a bit of that and that's just how we cook, right? I'm gonna give that a try and see how it looks. Like. And then I'm just gonna kind of stand by here and stir this until it's nice and smooth. but everything is ready to roll. So we have our ice cream here, which is ready. And then we have a dish here. I prefer to use a flatter dish, even um, like a cookie sheet or something like that to add in my mix-ins, especially if it's something that I want to keep kind of a swirl in. I just find it works better than trying to mix it in a bowl. Um, and then I have my brownies here, which are all cut up in little pieces. And then of course our fudge sauce. So we are ready to assemble. So I'm gonna start by just putting the ice cream into my dish here. So I'm gonna actually start with the fudge sauce. Ooh, that's gonna be good. Okay, and then I'll just put some of these brownie pieces on here, breaking them up even more as I go. So this is what it looks like now. And I'm just gonna stir this in, trying not to mix too hard, because I want the fudge to kind of remain in swirls. So I'll just kind of fold it over. That is looking so good. I'm gonna dish some out and we'll be ready to taste test. it's getting a little bit soft so that's from all the stirring transferring containers and everything um, I do like to get an ice cream scoop and get a nice rounded top on here uh, I'm not sure if we're too soft for that yet let me check normally I like to put it in the freezer for a while after I've mixed it in just so everything can um, get all solid and nice and hard so you can get the perfect scoops again. Uh, I am running out of time. I have to be leaving in about an hour here, so we're just gonna go like this. 
but this is what it looks like. Let's try it. Mmm. That's so good. This is how I make my homemade ice cream. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, I tried to think of everything, but if there was any Thing I was missing or if you have any questions about anything don't be afraid to let me know down below subscribe if you're new and I'll look forward to seeing you next time bye guys